So last week we did a whole photo shoot of some Lego Star Wars characters. It was the Mandalorian Lego. It was pretty fun. I actually had a really good time making that video, but a few of you asked for a more in detail breakdown of especially the Photoshop editing that went into those photos. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to cover one of those photos in detail, the kind of desert photo. I'll put it up on screen now so you can see what I'm talking about. We're going to go into it. We're going to cover all of the things. We're going to go pretty quick because otherwise this video is going to be like an hour long. So strap in, get yourself a cup of tea or something so you can enjoy yourself. Let's get into it. It's tutorial Tuesday. <laughs> Back to Tutorial Tuesday with Asia Week. Each and every Tuesday, we bring in a brand new fresh photography tutorial. This week, of course, is absolutely no different. <coughs> I overdid it on the fresh then. I, over I slightly overdid it for myself. We're going to be going into Lightroom and then mostly into Photoshop. I've already told you what we're doing. Let's just dive in. I won't waffle on. Let's just get into it. So we've got two photos we're going to start with in Lightroom. I went into detail on how I took these photos and why I took multiple photos in different lighting. We're going to be looking at this one and then this one initially. The exact same photo, just different lighting, and you'll see why that's useful in a bit. I've made a very slight edit, as you can see, to these photos, and I've just used the exact same settings on both. But we are literally talking about a little bit of a bump in contrast reducing the highlights a little bit, a little bit of clarity, stuff like that. Nothing major, really just a minor tweak. What we're going to do is select one of them, hold control, select the other one, right click, edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. So we've got both of those as individual layers in the same Photoshop file, which is exactly what we want. Now we've got one which is much more clearly lit, which you can see here, and then one, one which is much darker lit with the kind of rim lighting from behind. That's because the end result photo is going to have the sun setting behind our character. So we want some backlighting, some rim lighting, and this is going to be perfect. This is probably going to be the main kind of look we use with a little bit of this sprinkled in, but the brighter image makes it much easier to mask this out because, of course, we just want our character here. Now, the way we're going to do that, we're going to come up to the quick selection tool here. We're not going to use that. We're going to come up to where it says select subject. I'm actually going to click this drop down, click cloud because it, it just does a better job and click select subject. Photoshop's going to just mask out our subject there or at least select him. Perfect. We can go ahead and click create layer mask and then we can actually just press alt and click and drag that layer mask onto the other layer as well. Fantastic. Let's bring the darker layer above and then with both of these layers selected, we can press Control T. I'm going to rotate this slightly so that he's standing a bit more upright and just place him somewhere around about here. Great. For now, that's all we need to do with that. Now we need to bring in the background. Now I'm using a photo that I've taken in the past. This is down on the south coast at the beach at sunset. So kind of perfect, kind of the closest I'm going to get to a desert you know, without actually going somewhere or just getting some online. But you could do that. You could use a stock photo online as well. I am going to use one that I've taken though. So I'm just going to drag that into Photoshop now. I can literally just drag it on top here and just size it up a little bit so that it fills the uh, the photo here. Let's go for something like that. Now, the first thing we need to do is just use the clone stamp tool to remove our subject and the cliffs here. So I can do that fairly easily. Okay, so that is basically fine to be honest with you. And then the next thing I'm going to do is actually come up here to edit and go to sky replacement. Now the, the sky is fine in this, but I do want to bring in a specific one. Now the sky replacement in Photoshop is incredibly easy to use. We've done a whole video on it before, but essentially Photoshop's going to mask out the sky. Photoshop's going to give us a new sky to play with. You can use this drop down menu to select all kinds of skies. This is the one I want to use. Absolute ideal. I'm going to bring the brightness up just a touch on the sky, just a touch, not too much. And then I'm pretty much going to just bring up things like the foreground lighting, edge lighting and color adjustment. That's going to adjust the foreground a little bit. So the actual photo of the beach to adjust it for color and stuff like that to match with the sky. We can press OK and Photoshop's going to put that all into new layers inside a new group, which I can actually close to make it a little bit tidier over here. Now, the first problem we've got is obviously that the sun's reflection on our photo is now not in the right place. But we can again use the clone stamp tool to just move that. So I'm going to select it here and I'm going to just paint it in over here. And I think that's going to look pretty good. We're also going to add, you know, a little bit of a glow and stuff to our to our photo here. So, you know, where the sun is. So we're going to we're going to add stuff in. It's not not going to be a problem at all. I'm going to bring the flow down a little bit now uh, just to 
try and sort of uh, get a little bit of a softer edge. There we go. That looks quite nice. And then we can also just do the same here. We've got a little bit of an edge there. We just need to just need to fix. Not too difficult. Using a low flow is a really good way of doing something like that. It's just a little bit, a uh, little bit softer. I'm not too worried about kind of any of this stuff here. Uh, because we're going to cover that up anyway. But what I am going to do is just select the background layer, select the sky replacement group as well, and I'm going to group those as a whole, and I'm going to call that background. Now, I'm also going to then press Control T, right click, and flip that horizontally so that we actually have this the way I think it should be. Perfect. Now, we can actually bring our Mandalorian back in. So I'm going to bring those two layers up above our background. I'm going to actually move them a little bit as well. I want to place them around about here. I think maybe about there. That's going to look pretty good, I think. Maybe even something like that. There we go. Lovely. Now, that looks okay. It doesn't look super real, partly because we don't have any shadow, partly because we need to adjust some lighting, but we're getting there. The next thing I'm going to do is just right click on these layer masks. I'm going to click apply at layer mask. That's to both of the Mandalorian layers. That's going to allow us to now create a new layer mask. And essentially, it just really solidifies that layer mask we had. So where we'd masked him out, we now can't go back. But that's what we want, because we want to be able to apply our own layer mask again on top of that. I'm going to drag the lighter version of him up above, create a new layer mask. It's all white, so all revealed. So I'm going to press Control i Now it's all black, which means nothing on that layer is revealed. Now we can use a brush with let's go for a white brush. We can press X to just flip the foreground and background colors there. And with a low flow, 20% is fine. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. I can just paint in a little bit of this other layer just to reveal a little bit of the Mandalorian here. Now, if you feel you've gone too far, paint a bit of black in there and you'll be taking that off. But look at the difference that makes. Just allows us to see our, our character there a little bit, which is which is rather nice. I don't want to go too far with it because it is, you know, a little bit silhouetted. The biggest issue now is he's not interacting at all with the scene. So we're going to go new layer. We're going to drag that below our Mandalorian friend here. And we're going to, with a black paintbrush, a reasonably low flow again, we're going to zoom in and we're literally going to paint a shadow in. Now, the shadow will want to be a little bit more intense the closer it is. So very dark right under his feet here. But with a low flow, you can build this up very easily, which is really nice. I mean, even just that makes a huge difference, right? Because he's now interacting with the scenery. We're just going to build this up as a reasonably soft shadow. Getting bigger as we go away from him and trying to keep this so that it matches with the direction of the sun. That actually looks really, really good. I'm really, I'm, pr I'm pretty pleased with that, actually. Cool. There we go. I, I'm, I think that looks all right. Now, if I turn that off and back on, you can see that's making a huge difference to really sell that he's there on that beach. We're going to go even further with that. But for now, this is this is kind of what we're going to stick with. I think that's pretty good for him actually being there. The next thing we might want to do is go new layer. And what I'm going to do is select one of these kind of oranges or yellows. I want to make it a little bit more colorful and I want to make it a little bit more orange. Something like this. Right, and then we're going to go, we're going to group the two Mandalorian layers together. So select them, press Control G. Uh, I'm going to name that actually Mando. And this layer, we're going to paint on some more rim lighting. Now you can hold Alt and click on the line between that and the Mando layer here to make this layer only affect anything on him. So if I was to paint on him, you can see it paints, but anywhere else it doesn't paint. Now I'm going to bring that flow up to something like something like 70%. I'm going to make this a bit of a harder brush as well. So let's go 70%, zoom in. And all I'm going to do is just paint on the edges here. Don't want to go too far in. Just want to add a little bit of rim lighting that uh, just to accentuate it a little bit. So I'm just not going too far, not going too crazy with it. It might be that this is something that you wouldn't necessarily want to do. I mean, we're going beyond photography anyway, right? It's it's very much a uh, an art piece at this point, right? Which I think is still pretty cool, but uh, it's a different kind of thing to just straight up photography. 
this is very much a, a different a different feel. Now, I like what we've done there. We might want to just bring the opacity down a touch, but I think that actually looks pretty cool. I'm also going to go ahead and add an exposure layer. So just an adjustment layer exposure. And again, let's only apply that to Mando. Let's bring the exposure up to something like plus 3.7, that's fine. And let's make the layer mask here all black. And then with a white paintbrush, we can just paint this on as well. So now I'm gonna go a little bit softer with this brush. Now we really are painting on rim lighting by actually painting on some positive exposure to the side or the edge of him. There we go, I like that. Now if I was to turn those off, you can see it's making quite a difference. It just adds a nice rim light on him. So edge lighting from the sun, which looks, I think, really, really nice. Back into Lightroom, where we're gonna take the ship as well. Exactly the same thing. I've got two pictures of the ship. One is lighter, one is darker. Let's select both. Let's go edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. It's going to open in a new Photoshop document. Not a problem, we just select both layers. Control C, bring them over. Control V, close that other document. We don't want that. And we now have the two ships. Exactly the same as before. We're gonna use the lighter layer to mask it out. So I'm gonna go up here to the uh, select subject, we're gonna go cloud, we're gonna select it. Okay, great. So we can just press and hold alt and left click and drag that layer mask onto the other ship so that that is masked perfectly as well. Let's turn on the other layers again and let's select both of those. Let's press control T, let's scale this down a little bit. We wanna have this parked off in the background. So something, something like, something like that. He's walking away from the ship for some reason. Uh, so we're going to put that there. I think that looks good. We can just drag that down beneath, probably beneath all of the rest so that it is behind as well. Now, I'm going to bring the darker layer up so that's above the lighter layer. Again, I'm going to right click and apply those layer masks so that we can apply new layer masks to this. Let's bring the lighter layer of the ship above the darker layer. Let's apply a layer mask to it and press Control I to turn that black. And then let's, with a white paintbrush, just paint on some of the areas that we think would be lit up a little bit more. So we add a bit of detail, essentially, from the sun. If you feel like you do an area that doesn't want to be lit up, then not a problem. You just use black paintbrush to just darken that again, bring it back to the sort of in-shadow one. I like doing this. I think that you can even do a little bit of this sort of stuff. You can, If you go too far with it, you can always reduce the opacity of the lighter layer if you want as well. So you could really, if you wanted to, you could add quite a lot of detail and then just reduce the opacity of that so that you still have a lot of the darker elements and the, the rim lighting. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. What I do want to do is add another shadow, so a new layer, and we're going to bring that underneath the ship layers here. In fact, let's group the ship layers just to make this a little bit easier. So just select them press Control G, and then I'm gonna name that ship. With the new layer, we're gonna use black with a paintbrush, nice low flow, about 20% is probably about right. And we're gonna go in with a nice soft brush and just paint underneath this ship. So all of the bits that will be sort of creating the most shadow, that's where I'm gonna paint first. If you get it wrong, just Control Z, no problem. And then we can just build out a little bit of a softer shadow. And with the low flow, the more you paint over it, the more you create. Now, I can also reduce the opacity of this shadow, but I think that actually looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. What I would probably do then is look to blur that a little bit, the ship as a whole. So I'm gonna go ahead and click the ship layer, right click, convert to smart object, come up to filter. We're gonna go blur, Gaussian blur, 6.4, I think that works about right, actually. I think that's probably what I used last week when I made last week's tutorial Tuesday. So let's go in and do that. That looks pretty good, but of course the landscape itself is now not blurred. So we need to come down to the background layer. What I'm gonna do is probably convert this to a smart object as well. All that's doing is allowing us to then separately change the blur after it's been applied. What I'm gonna do here is now go blur gallery. We're gonna get a field blur. And this allows us to create a really nice depth of field kind of feel to what's going on. We can select different points. So I'm gonna select one here, which is roughly where 
our main character is. I'm going to select another one about here and then another one here. Now we can adjust how much blur there is at these different points and create almost a gradient of blur between them. So this one here, we're going to want to go zero blur. That's where the focal plane is, where our character is. That looks great. This one behind here, let's go something like, let's go 10. See how that looks. I think that looks pretty good. And this one here, let's go five. It's much closer, so let's go five. I'm gonna click this little tick box, high quality. I just like to tick it. Why wouldn't you want high quality? So I'm just gonna tick it. And I'm gonna press OK. And I think that that looks pretty good. I'm pretty pleased with how that's coming along. So the next thing I'm gonna do is add an extra bit of glow to the sun. This is something that is pretty easy to do. There's a few ways you could do it. So for example, you could come in with a new layer and actually come all the way to the top and just use something like a very bright, almost white, big brush, soft, a flow of, let's go, let's go something like 80% and just dab that in. You could do something like that and then mask that out. But what I'm going to do is actually use a glow that I have from a pack that I own of kind of overlays you can add into Photoshop. This is stuff you can find online really easily. A lot of it is very cheap. You can probably find free ones as well, but I'm gonna add that in. And all I have to do is actually just drag that onto the image like that. I'm gonna set the blend mode to screen, which gets rid of all that black, which is nice. And we just have the glow. Look at that, that looks lovely. And that really pulls together that sun. Now, of course, we can bring the opacity down of this a bit if we want to. I quite like it 100%. And what I might do is actually just create a layer mask on this. It's all white. So I'm gonna use a black paintbrush to actually just paint a little bit where I think that this would be blocked. We're gonna use a very low flow. Let's go for like 16%, it's fine, I think. And some of that, and just on our main character himself. But I think that's looking pretty good, if I'm being honest with you. I quite like that. He's walking away from the sun. He's got the, the glow of the sun, we've got the ship in the background. The last thing we can do to really tie this together is to color grade the whole photo. So we can go new adjustment layer, color lookup, and let's go for something like, let's go crisp warm. Now, of course, it's way too intense. We can bring the opacity down of this layer to something like 33%. I think that looks quite nice, but you could also try something like teal orange plus contrast. That looks quite nice, a bit different. This is really pulling everything together because it's color grading everything in the same way. So it really helps to marry all these separate elements together. I think that looks pretty good. A little bit more sort of cinematic maybe, but you could try all these different types. I mean, film stock is pretty nice as well. I think that looks quite nice. Once you're done with it, let's press Control S. Let's save the image. And that's gonna bring it back to Lightroom. So now we can just go back to Lightroom. The image is here and we can continue doing things if we want. We could actually go ahead and make this a crop, a 16 by nine crop. I think that probably would work quite nicely. We could make adjustments with things like highlights. We can add some various masks in if we want to add a maybe a radial gradient. We could make it so that it's a little bit even more intense in the middle. We can make it so there's more of a glow from that sun. You know, that might look quite cool. There's a lot of different things that we could do with this. Or, of course, you could leave it exactly as it is. I think this looks good. Maybe bring the exposure down. And you can even add another preset if you want to add something extra cinematic, something like that. Reduce the amount of it. And I'm pretty happy with how that looks. And that is essentially how I put that together. Most of these techniques also carry over to the space image that we did as well. Very, very similar kind of techniques, just a little bit of a different vibe to the image. If you'd like to see that specific photo done as well, let me know in the comments, because absolutely, these are a blast to make. I really enjoy doing these, so let me know. If there's anything else you want to see in Tutorial Tuesday, let me know in the comments, So I love making the stuff you want to see. Otherwise, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you next time, and as always, thanks for watching. Come on.